Jake Lloyd-Jones is an Australian cinematographer who's currently in South Kurdistan in northern Iraq. Hello, Jake. Why did you decide to make this trip to South Kurdistan? Uh, well, I've been interested in the Kurdish struggle um, for a long time. I, I, was, I used to be very interested in the revolution in Spain when uh, the Spanish Republic was fighting with the fascists in between the two world wars. And uh, the Rojavan revolution has a lot of similar political ideas. Um, it, it's just, you know, a, a sort of a David and Goliath story. And um, I, I'm amazed by how much they've achieved in terms of women's rights and things like that. So. I've always wanted to do whatever I could to help support their cause. As the Rojava revolution marks its 10th anniversary, the Erdogan regime in Turkey is stepping up its military offensive against Kurds in northern Iraq, as well as in north and east Syria. And some of the fiercest fighting is currently taking place in the former. What can you tell us about this? Well, I mean, Turkey has been backing the jihadists in Syria for for years now. They um, they don't like Assad and uh, they don't like the Kurds. And um, uh, the they basically um, NATO is, is has in order to get Turkey to agree to let Sweden and Finland into NATO. They they've totally rolled over and shown their belly to Turkey, and Turkey's now you know, openly using chemical weapons and stuff on the Kurds and um, bombing civilians. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago they killed a one-year-old baby uh, at a popular tourist destination here. Um, and the world says nothing, you know, as long as um, Turkey keeps doing what NATO wants. Um, and it, it's just... Um, really disappointing. We, we were at the Halabja Memorial the other day and you, we saw pictures of these uh, dead children killed by weapons supplied by NATO countries. Um, and now it's happening again. Like, we, history is just repeating itself as usual. There have also been Turkish attacks on the Yazidi community in Shengal or Sinjar. Can you please explain the background to this? Yeah, so one of the most moving stories uh, that um, you, you will hear in, in this long war is about when ISIS overran the Asidi villages in Mount Sinjar and um, the, the Peshmerga that belonged to Bazani and the PDK fled. Uh, without firing a shot. In fact, they even disarmed many of the Ezidi, promising to defend them, and then just left, left them to the mercy of these ISIS head choppers, you know. And um, those people were surrounded, they were on top of the mountain in the same uh, July heat that we're experiencing right now. Um, it's unimaginably hot, the children were fainting from dehydration and um, nobody was coming to save them and, and it was actually the female guerrillas from the PKK and the YPJ who put their own lives on the line and went in there, forced a corridor open through the Daesh lines and carried those children out on their backs under fire. Um, now, Azidi refugees have you can find them all over the world. We have them in Australia. Um, and they can't return to their homes because the area is controlled by both Iranian militia and the Turks. And um, they're, they're, it's, it's not in, you know, it's, it's not in Turkey, it's in, in Iraq. Um, and Turkey's just wandering around. They have military bases here. Um, and they're completely complicit in the continuing oppression of these poor Azidi people. Um, there even um, a lot of the young girls and women were sold into slavery by ISIS. 
to the jihadists and the, if you go to northwest Syria, the area that is held by Turkey, the jihadist families are sitting there protected by Turkey with these slaves, these Azidi slaves. Um, and because it's Turkey, nobody does anything. What is the response of the Iraqi government and the Kurdistan regional government to these uh, persistent and violent aggressions from Turkey? So the Iraqi government has been pretty weak um, until this latest attack where some Arabs were killed and now they've um, lodged an official complaint to Turkey. Up until then it seemed to be sort of open season on the because it was only Kurds getting killed and the Iraqi government didn't seem too concerned about that even though Turkey was coming into Iraqi territory bombing and has actual military bases here in Iraq, northern Iraq. Um, but uh, as for the KRG, Bazani and the PDK, they're, they're, full, they're actually collaborators. They're, they're actually assisting Turkey in this um, when Turkey is attacking Kurds. It, it's quite astonishing, but um, that's just how mercenary these guys are. On July 20th in Tehran, Erdogan repeated his intention to launch a new invasion of Rojava to occupy a 30 kilometer wide security zone. How imminent do Kurds you have spoken to think this invasion is and what are the prospects for it being prevented if not defeated? Well, the Kurds here um, are ready to mobilize if that invasion occurs. They're watching the news very closely. They're hoping that Russia and Iran will manage to discourage Turkey from doing it. But Turkey is a bit of a rogue animal. They, it, they don't care that um, they're being told not to do it. Um, the problem is that, that that 30 kilometer zone along the border is where most of the Kurds in Rojava are. All of their major towns and cities and bases, they're within that 30 kilometers. So it's a, effectively eliminating Rojava if that happens. And um, the Kurds are up against a NATO army with artillery aircraft all you know made in america and uh, they're using chemical weapons it's um the chances of the kurds with just their um their their light arms being able to stop that uh, it, i'm not optimistic about that you visited halabja what lessons should the world learn from the 1998 halabja massacre and its consequences uh, at halabja one of the most um shocking things we saw there was actually a photograph of the opening of that memorial and standing on the podium was Colin Powell and Barzani both of whom uh, you know Barzani is a, a collaborator um, who has sold out his own people and Colin Powell he, he, he um, it was America and the CIA that was supporting Saddam Hussein when this happened and who tried to, uh, they, they gave Saddam instructions on how to manage the propaganda and cover it up and conceal what had happened. And, and then he's standing there in his suit looking all sad. Um, the, the hypocrisy is breathtaking. Um, and, and now, again, Turkey's doing the same thing. Yesterday we buried a comrade who was killed in the mountains by a chemical attack from Turkey. Again the Kurds are the victims, again the weapons are coming from us, from the Europeans.